Draconic Astrology, what it is and how to use it. Not much is really known about Draconic Astrology, just perhaps that it is an ancient and was used in Babylonian times and also that, interestingly, Edgar Cayce, the sleeping prophet, also used it. In fact, besides providing healing suggestions when under deep hypnosis, self-hypnosis, from 1923 to 1945, Case also offered Casey. Uh, also offered life readings, about 2,500 in all, during which he made repeated astrological references. However, it appears such references mostly did not seem to refer to tropical astrology, but to draconic astrology, the nodal zodiac, or so some astrologers have claimed. If you are interested in finding out some um, more about of the comments Casey made about astrology while under deep hypnosis, there is a booklet titled Astrology and the Edgar Casey Readings, written by Margaret Gammon and published by uh, ARE Press in 1967. In alternative, you will find much information also on the website, um, Edgar Casey's website. Whether Casey used draconic astrology or not, frankly, is beside the point. The point really is that when you draw your astrological birth chart using the draconic zodiac, and especially when you compare it to your normal tropical chart, a few things stand out which help illuminate what your higher self wants you to focus on, as well as the flavor of the lifetime you're currently living. It goes beyond the usual psychological traits that can be gleaned by those who have a trained eye. Without wishing to sound metaphysical at all costs, let's just say that the picture offered of a person by the wonderful discipline art of astrology when enriched by the draconic chart is simply, undeniably fuller. Okay then, you self-proclaimed galactic ambassador, enlighten us. Where do you think all this comes from? I hear some of you ask. Well, I had a vision, one of several during my four stays in enchanting Egypt between 2011 and 2013. And what I think is that we owe a lot to those we ha who have become known as the Shining Ones, the Shem Suhor, who are responsible for reseeding planet Earth after the catastrophe, probably caused by a comet or meteorite, that happened on the planet 12,800 years ago, officially known as the Younger Dryas. Astrology, and even draconic astrology, probably is their gift left to give us a map of some kind, and to help us see that there is order in the cosmos. Whether they were the human inhabitants of Atlantis who survived, or cosmic brothers and sisters, or both, I think astrology is among the heritage we have been left from those times. My two cents, anyway. People mostly look to India when in search for ancient wisdom. Not me. To me, all comes from the heritage left mainly in Egypt and elsewhere by the followers of Horus, also known as Shining Ones or Shemsu Hor. Several books have been dedicated to the Shining Ones, in case any of you would like to know more. Among them, I recommend Freddie Silver's books and documentaries. Back to the point. Considering that I cannot offer any proof about much of what I'm saying, let's get back to the practical point here and find out how to read the draconic chart, shall we? Before we begin, let's get a few points straight and then get on with one or two examples. Astroseek.com is your port of call, the website you need if you want to set up your own or somebody else's draconic chart. Unless you are the proud owner, as I am, of one of the excellent astro programs which include the Draconic Zodiac, that is. In that case, you can choose whether to get the Draconic chart set up using the True or Mean node. It is a matter of personal preference. Personally, I use and prefer the True node. Astroseek.com even allows you to compare your birth chart with the Draconic chart in a by wheel and see how they interact. Just treat the Draconic planet as a sort of a higher octave of the normal planets you're familiar with in tropical astrology. No need to complicate matters, really. Once the by wheel is in front of your eyes, all you need to do to start with is the following. 1. Find out where the draconic sun, moon and ascendant are, in which natal house of your natal chart they fall, and which fixed stars they are in aspect with conjunction and opposition. Also look at the draconic chart on its own. 
Look at which draconic planets conjunct or oppose your natal planets and points from which houses and how closely. Check the orb. It is worth including Chiron, the Vertex and at least Lilith. Number three, check the four angles plus maybe even the vertex. Are any draconic or natal planets conjunct or opposition one or more of the chart's angles? You will find that some of the natal chart's main themes are repeated and reinforced, while some are more clearly delineated by the, web, the by will comparing the two charts into aspects, where the draconic astrology opens windows onto those subtler dimensions of our beings that allow us to express that multidimensionally is not really for me to say. I'm far more concerned on whether and how this kind of astrology can help here and now. And yes, it can. It offers you a fuller picture. And that, for me, is enough. On to an example now. Let's analyze the by will of a fam famous person, beginning with Marilyn Monroe. If you compare the two charts of the unforgettable actress, whose death is still surrounded by shadows and doubts, you will immediately find yourself face to face with the element of enchantment, escapism, deception and addiction, alas, indicated by an elevated draconic Neptune conjunct or natal MC. Her draconic moon in Scorpio conjunct the IC shows that she was a sexy, emotionally complex lady whose very deep, at times difficult emotions had a lot to teach her. See her natal moon in Aquarius in the seventh opposition Neptune, a very complex aspect indeed. An angular, angular Jupiter emphasizes her need to find a philosophy of life that could guide her steps as well as her thirst for knowledge and for broadening her horizons. Look at that draconic Sun Mercury in futuristic, open-minded Aquarius, conjunct her natal moon Jupiter in the seventh house of relationships. A lot of karma seems to have be concentrated in that area, which seems to be where she was destined to learn the most. Peaceful that area was not. Her draconic ascendant is stroppy willful Aries in her natal ninth conjuncts her natal Venus, while her draconic Venus opposes her nat natal Pluto, and draconic Pluto conjuncts her natal Mars Uranus. Again, she seems likely to meet the underworld by her relating, and her relationships and marriages were complex indeed, to say the least. Looking at it from another angle, Given that her draconic Mercury is angular, it is also known how much she cared about learning and expanding her horizons. Her conjunctions inter aspects between tropical and draconic charts in the seventh confirm that passion for learning, as does her angular draconic Jupiter. I think you get the picture without spending hours analyzing all factors involved. It really reveals a lot of the soul's plan, doesn't it? Let's have a look at another actress's chart now. The first thing that seems worth noticing is the elevated draconic sun and natal Lilith near the natal MC, both now in Germany in the draconic chart, and we're talking about Shirley MacLaine now. The spiritual, mystical, psychic Neptune, Nep uh, moon Neptune conjunction in Virgo in the 12th house clearly facilitates and inspires her acting, as well as her more metaphysical work. Interestingly, that conjunction turns into Libra in the draconic zodiac and it falls in the first house, on the cusp of her natal sec second house, conjunct natal Jupiter in the first. Her draconic Jupiter is in Sagittarius in the third house, opposition Chiron in the ninth. To what extent she loved traveling, learning, communicating, expanding her horizons, fighting for freedom and the rights of others, not to mention the search for her ideal philosophy of life, is well known. Her unencumbered, rebellious nature is evident from the placement of Uranus. What is also well known about her is her sexy side. And look at that draconic Venus in Taurus conjunct her natal Sun in Mercury and Uranus and exactly conjunct natal Mars in the 8th house of sex and other people's money, among other things. Draconic Vertex is in the, ninth, in the 8th conjuncts the Sun too. This, according to some theories, indicates fated relationships where karma gets worked out. And there was definitely karma around money as well in her own marriage and divorce, the, her only marriage and divorce, according to her biographical books. Her draconic son in Gemini, in the natal ninth house of publishing, and draconic Mercury in the ninth conjunct natal Chiron, 
says a lot about the informative healing role her writings were destined to have too. Draconic Saturn conjuncts natal Mercury shows how serious it was destined to be. Her books ended up heavily influencing the New Age scene globally. And now on to Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce was natally an outer planet person, with Uranus rising on the Ascendant in Leo and an elevating Pluto conjunct the MC in Taurus. Venus, its ruler, part of the stellium in Pisces, in the seventh. That his karma was connected to service to people is evident exactly from the stellium in the seventh house opposition, his south node in Virgo in the first. But what do his draconic interaspects highlight? Well, draconic Chiron and Neptune are elevated, conjunct his natal MC to begin with, both conjunct natal Pluto there. Healing and psychic work channeling are clearly highlighted as a soul mission. Draconic Uranus ascendant in Virgo in the first house are opposition all his planets in the seventh house and his draconic sun in Aries is conjunct natal Chiron in the eighth. Healing and service figure very prominently as part of his karma, I would say, as well as esoteric subjects and pioneering role too. That is what his soul had planned for this very quiet, pious, religious man who read the Bible at least once a year. He was a Uranian Therefore, his role in life involved awakening, innovative tendencies, and with such prominent Neptune and Pluto, and the draconic stallion placed in the 8th house, again, psychic abilities were involved. The pioneering role is also shown by the draconic stallion being placed in Aries in the 8th, conjunct his natal son. His biographies reveal that he was a very quiet man, but that sometimes he was plagued by spells of sudden, explosive anger, which very deeply shocked him more than those who surrounded him. But that, perhaps, is hardly surprising to an astrologer who sees his natal stellium in Pisces turn from accommodating Pisces to confrontational Aries. His draconic moon in communic communicative Gemini is in the natal 10th house, and his draconic Mercury is conjunct his natal sun. Interestingly, his draconic Saturn Venus are also conjunct his natal sun, indicating that both love and discipline were going to be part of his karma in the present incarnation. If we only think of the incredible number of hours spent in self-induced hypnotic trance to give information and serve his fellow humans, time that was taken away from his own life and activities, should we really be surprised that his draconic ascendant was in service oriented Virgo? These three examples, I hope, show how efficient and practical draconic astrology is in highlighting what the soul had in mind before incarnating, the master plan, so to speak, and it shows how, um, also shows which energies will be important, prevalent and even necessary to work with. Again, just the inter aspects provide plenty of details and a clear picture. In these three examples, I have left out galactic information, but in my full readings I certainly include whether whatever fixed star happens to in conjunct or oppose draconic sun, moon and ascendant, the magical trio. A very important point I have not made so far, but that is worth mentioning, is the use of draconic astrology in synastry. It certainly adds a whole new level of clarity in how a couple relates and why. Their dynamics suddenly become much clearer. Try it with your own personal relationships, family and friends, and you will be amazed at what you will discover. I hope this brief presentation was able to ignite the fire of curiosity within you. I feel sure you will find it interesting if you try it. I certainly wouldn't dream of doing a chart without draconic astrology. To me, it is not only familiar, but a very profound addition. Be inspired and have fun with it. You won't be sorry. That is my wish for you. Bye for now. For information about the types of consultations you can book with me, Patrizia Trotta, Galactic Ambassador, for yourself or a loved one, please visit www.tendenzefuture.org slash English. Thank you. Draconic Astrology, what it is and how to use it. Not much is really known about Draconic Astrology, just perhaps that it is an ancient and was used in Babylonian times and also that, interestingly, Edgar Cayce, the sleeping prophet, also used it. In fact, besides providing...